Welcome to Design to the Nines. I'm Natalie Callahan, and if this is the first time we're meeting, welcome to my channel. On today's episode, we are going to be doing an extreme makeover on this thrift store beauty. So let's get started. <music> months ago I finally discovered a relatively decent thrift store in my area and I picked up this poop brown <gasps> I just said that <laughs> but that's the color of it it is the ugliest shade of brown painted console table for about 20 bucks so that was a really good deal it was very sturdy it was made of real wood and so I liked that and I liked the overall shape and idea of it it has good bones here so I really think that we can make this into something absolutely amazing by adding some doors maybe adding some furniture feet and some really cool hardware and it is gonna look nothing like this when we're done with it Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is build a door and we're gonna build it kind of shaker styles. And this is just a scrap piece of wood that's left over from my shelf build here in my craft room. And so this I had on hand already. So we're gonna just take some of this poplar and it's two and a half inches wide by 36 inches. And I've used this before to kind of dress up a door and we're gonna create kind of like a shaker door. I always like to wear protective eyewear whenever I'm working with anything that could spit up some sawdust. I also have an apron on because, well, why get dirtier than you need to? <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna be using a circular saw that's cordless and this will work perfect for what we're doing. So the first thing we're gonna do is mark our measurements, which is 19 and three quarters inch. And then we can use just one of our trim pieces to connect the dots and make sure that everything matches up. So we've got that marked. And then all we need to do is there's this red release button here. And if we push that down and pull the trigger at the same time, then it will start like that. But first we got to line it up with the blade and then we're going to hold on. And it was easy as that. Okay, so we've got our door cut down to the dimensions that we want, and so it's the right size. And now we're gonna add some trim. I picked this up at the Home Depot for a couple bucks. And all we're gonna do is just lay it on top of here. Make sure it's flush with the edge here on both sides. And then we're gonna take our pencil, this is a little trick I like to do, and just trace. And then we know how long it is. And then we're gonna keep this excess because it's gonna be the rail. So these are the styles and this will be the rail to our top and the other one will be to the bottom. So we're only gonna need two of these per door. All right, now it's time to use my miter saw and this is gonna make the job so easy. Now, when working with it, again, safety glasses, this is really easy to do. All we need to do is line up the edge of our blade with our line and then pull the release again, it's the yellow, and then grab the trigger and push down, and we've got this. All right, so now we need to do the style, or the, I mean, the rail. So we're just gonna make sure this is all lined up. Gonna mark that. So you can see that this fits nicely there. So we can use this as a pattern for our next one. All right, so you can see that we've got a door shaping up really nicely. So now all we're gonna do is take some Gorilla Wood glue and glue it down to this piece. And then I'm gonna take my nail gun that I'm gonna show you how to use here and just put a couple of finished nails into it so that it's very secure. So now I'm gonna show you how to use this nail gun. They do make electric nail guns. Mine is run by an air compressor. And the first thing we need to do is put in some small little finished nails. These are tiny, they're pretty short, but they will work perfectly for what we're doing. So we just do that by placing them right inside here. And this is like a finished brad nailer. And then we're gonna just slowly close that and now we need to hook it to our 
pose. <laughs> and then we're gonna pull this back, stick this in and release, and then it's snugly on. So now we're ready to turn it on. And the thing to remember about tank pressure is that if it's going in too far, then you need to reduce the pressure. If it's not going in far enough, you need to increase the pressure. But I usually keep the dials about right in the middle. And so we're gonna turn that on now and build the pressure. And when it stops making the noise, then we know it's ready to use the air compressor. So now it's time to assemble this door. So we're gonna just flip this over, maybe take off this sticker. <laughs> but then we're gonna take our Gorilla wood glue and we're gonna squeeze a little on. Flip this over. And you may wanna just jiggle it a little bit to get that wood glue spread out a little bit. And then we're gonna make sure that everything lines up. We're gonna put in a, a couple of finish nails, push it down, that acts as the release. And then we pull the trigger. And then I'll do it on this other side before we do a second one. All right, there we go. And then we'll just move forward. And there we have a door. Isn't it awesome? We built this. We just need to build the second one and then meet me back inside. So this episode is part of my Girls Can Use Power Tools Challenge. I'm doing things a little differently this time. I've assembled it as a part of a hop. I've invited some of my awesome YouTube friends. So at the end of this episode, I'm gonna send you on to an awesome and talented YouTuber. Then they're gonna send you on to somebody and they're gonna send you on to somebody until the hop is completed. And by the end of it, you are gonna feel so empowered to use Power Tools. So we've got our doors and they're done and they're so cute. But now I wanna add some dimension by adding a top on top. <laughs> this I got at Lowe's already cut to size. Our table is 48 inches and this is 48 inches. So it's really not gonna add any dimension on the side, but it is a little bit deeper than this. And so it will add some dimension this way. So I like that. We're gonna glue and nail it down to the top, but we need a little bit longer nail. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna switch that out. We're just gonna push that down, open that up. And then we're gonna take our smaller finish now, which was perfect for what we were just doing and quickly switch it out for one that's a little bit longer. So we're just gonna pop that in there shut it and it's good to go. So then we'll put glue on this. Even though our nails are shorter than these two thicknesses, just to be safe, I'm gonna line it up right here with the sides and that way, you know, if anything crazy happens, it will go into the right place. So now I'm just gonna take some dry dex spackling and spackle up all the nail holes on our doors and on the top and make any patches that might be necessary. Then we're gonna sand it up and then we're gonna paint everything but the base. And you'll see why in just a second. I'm just using leftover paint from my stripes on my walls here in the craft room. The paint color is called Hail Navy. Just take your time painting, do a good job and make sure there are no drips. Okay, so I flipped our console over and the reason why is because I want to add decorative feet. I wanna get rid of this angled, ugly bottom. It's like, I don't know. I just really didn't like the look of it. So we're gonna take it off. And some of you might be asking why I didn't do this at the beginning. And the reason is, is because I knew I was gonna be painting it in place and I wanted it to be lifted up off the floor so that I could paint easier and not have to worry about that. So I've got a hammer and I'm just gonna try I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how we're gonna do this, but we're gonna give it a whirl. 
It's on there pretty good. Yes, look at that. Maybe I can turn it into a, like a blanket ladder or something. <laughs> I don't know. Now I'm gonna get the rest of the, like the rusty nails out. We don't want them there. And we're gonna put these in, what are these called? Straight top plate hardware. And that's what our feet are gonna screw into. And we're just gonna do it on all four corners. And so then we'll have beautiful feet instead of an ugly triangular base. All right, now we're getting to the good stuff. We get to hang our doors. Now, funny story. I don't know how many dozens of antique brass hinges I have removed from cabinets over the years. Now, when I need some of those, I can't find them anywhere. So what I had to do is spray paint some silver ones and antique and age them to look like all of those brass hinges that I have removed. <laughs> I'm like, where are those now? Anyway, so we've got our faked antique brass hinges hilarious and the reason why i wanted to do that is because i have this really cool hardware knob that's like a ring and it was left over from a desk it didn't end up going on it and i thought it would look really pretty with this blue with the gold so all we're gonna do is take <laughs> take our drill <laughs> and we are going to put our hinges on and I'm gonna make sure that we keep the distance the same on both of them. So then we're gonna take a Sharpie and we are going to mark where our hinges need to go. So we'll make sure that this is lined up how we want it. And then we are going to mark so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually drill it in and then pull it back out just to get it started and then we can do it with our cabinet hanging. Then we just drill a hole for our pretty knob. I am over the moon happy with how this extreme transformation on this piece of furniture turned out in the end. This was something that a lot of people might have passed over, but I am so glad I didn't. This will be a beautiful piece to store supplies in my craft room for years to come. If you enjoyed this episode, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. Don't forget to check out all of the talented ladies participating in this hop. And until next time to all of my DIY Niners. Bye.